Hi everybody, uh, we're going to talk about watches today. So specifically we're going to talk about the Grand Seiko Thin Dress series, um, which is a series of watches in Grand Seiko's Elegance Collection, which is you know, part of the overall range. Um, what is special about the Thin Dress series? Uh, well, so the idea of the Thin Dress series is that they are meant to be uh, thin, uh, manually wound, and just more elegant in their appearance. You know, good for tailoring, good for wearing to work, blah, blah, blah. Um, I bought one of them myself, uh, so I bought this piece called the SBGZ001, uh, which was actually made in the Micro Artist Studio, so this is like Grand Seiko's skunk works for their craziest stuff, and uh, I was just blown away. It was an incredible, incredible piece, and um, I liked it so much, I actually requested if I could meet the designers, because I really wanted to know like how did they come up with the ideas, what was the process, how did it get made, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and as a result, I gather a lot of information over interviews over two days, and I uh, am putting together, or I will be releasing an article on Watches by SJX today, uh, detailing those discoveries, and I'm filming this video, which is kind of like a companion video to that article. Um, two things, I want to also introduce this. So this is the Loop System 6X, and it's on the Universal Clip. So we're gonna shoot some of the watches using this thing, and it's, uh, it's pretty incredible, actually. It's pretty incredible how much detail you will be able to see using this thing. Second thing is, uh, people point this out quite often in the comments. Um, I just wanna make it clear, I have this hereditary skin condition called ichytosis. Uh, it means I have very, very dry hands. Uh, cream actually does not really help at all. Um, it's just how my body works. Uh, if you don't want to see my hands, we have an article and my hands aren't in it, but you know, under normal circumstances, I need my hands. Okay, so let's look at some watches. So let's start with um, the SBGK005. Or you know what? No, let's start with who came up with the overall thing? So there was actually a young designer named um, Sakai-san who came up with the whole concept of uh, the Thin Dress series. You know, and what I mean by the concept is things like he designed the markers, he designed the hands, he designed the case, right? But then like his kind of core concept was then uh, taken further by other designers in the company who would um, make it into, you know, different models with different specialties. So in the case of the SBGK, this was a limited edition manual wine mechanical, right? And in the case of the SBGZ001, that is a manual wine spring drive. So there are similarities, but there are differences. Um, the SBGK was done by a designer named Kosugi-san, and uh, he was the one who designed the dial and the placement of the um, power reserve and the sub-seconds. Uh, but let's focus first on the common elements of all of these watch of this whole thin dress series. So, uh, you know, Sakai-san's idea was that this thing should look like a wind-filled sail. It should be kind of organic, and it should look and feel light, right? So that's what uh, that's why it's got such a nice curvature to it. You know, like in profile, you really see those lines, and even in profile, you get a sense of like just how round that crystal is. It's got a beautiful dome to it. Um, also, I really, I, this is one of my favorite features. I love this facet here, right? Because this facet here, in the case of the mechanical ones, it's actually uh, convex. Oops, Sam, can you get the focus on that? There we go. So in the case of the manual ones, this one, this part is actually convex. Again, which is a nice contrast against this like brush surface here that tapers out at the end. Um, and in the case of the hands, like Grand Seiko hands are pretty famous for you know just how sharp they are. Obviously, uh, these are three facets. So what happens is there's a top, and then two beveled edges on the long sides. In fact, maybe you can see it better on the long hand. Whereas normal Grand Seikos actually be five facets. It'd be bevel, bevel, and then also bevel, bevel on the back as well, and hence five facet. Uh, the markers here are really fine and triangular, but with beveling as well. So they're really glinting and catching the light. And that was a big deal for Sakai-san. Like Sakai-san really wanted there to be great legibility with these watches. And really like that's also a feature of just the Grand Seiko collection in general. Um, moving on. Let's look at the SBGZ001, and actually let's put that loop on. I feel like an optician. You know when you go to an optician and they're like spinning that thing 
over your eyes. That's what it feels like. Anyway, um, so you might recognize the style. Okay, anyone who follows Grand Sago probably knows the snowflake. The snowflake treatment is a pressing. So they have this mold, it's hand carved, and it's, that's how they, and they press it onto the dial. And that's how you get that beautiful kind of organic um, unevenness to it. In the case of this, the designer whose name is Hoshino-san, so Hoshino-san is in, responsible for all the products that come out of the micro artist studio. Hoshino-san was like, I want to soup this design up and come up with something really unusual. You know, his goal for the micro artist studio is what would um, micro art, well, like what would designers from the 70s um, for Seiko do today with our modern techniques? You know, so it's always about pushing the envelope, but kind of maintaining a link to the past. And I think you can see it pretty clearly here, right? Like these are very fine little engravings, which they do using something like a dental drill, like very, very small, very high speed. You know, and that's what gives it this beautiful texture. And when you see this thing in photos, it looks more like an orange peel. Like you don't get a sense of like just how defined every single little line is here. But what for me is even more interesting, or actually just as interesting, um, is this. You see that? There's a little shiny chromed edge in between the lug and the bezel, which I think is just incredible. Like. Like the fact that they could do all of these little engravings and yet leave that completely untouched. And you see this crop up here and there, you know, it's like right here in the lug. See that? There's one tiny, tiny little facet that's just catching the light differently from the rest of the case. I think that's so cool. On the spring drive, um, you know, we mentioned that on that SPG K005, this was convex. On the spring drive, this is actually convex, uh, sorry, concave instead. Um, and the spring drive model is actually a little bit thinner than the, um, than the mechanical model. Um, the movement finishing is, for a micro artist studio watch, as you'd expect, just incredible. I mean, they went to Philippe Dufour, who's kind of the master of this sort of thing, and learned a bunch of techniques and brought it back. Uh, SJX actually has written a beautiful article, an exhaustive article, in fact, on like the movement of this and of movement finishing in general. So if you're interested in learning more about that, check that article out because it's really well worth your time. A um, couple interesting things here. So owners of the SBGZ are offered the opportunity to request an engraving on theirs. So on mine, I requested optimism. And actually, funny story, uh, I originally wanted to engrave equanimity. I think that's a very inco important concept. But... Joe Lowe, the guy who basically scammed all of Malaysia, named his boat Equanimity. So I was like, I guess I can't name it Equanimity anymore. Thanks a lot. Um, other interesting thing, this, so the gold chatons with the jewels inside, these are meant to look like a pair of little frog's eyes, which I thought was a really nice little touch. You know, it's, it's fun, actually, even for me right now, talking to everybody, getting to look at this watch under the loop and seeing stuff like this anglage, which is just incredible, especially when you get to see it at high magnification, you know? And then also the way they do the striping. Because the striping actually is really difficult to do. They do it by hand. And to keep it as straight as this is really quite skillful. Plus, at some angles, you can see just how blue the screws are. Just another lovely touch. See that? So there you go. Um, Sam, am I forgetting anything regarding this watch? I think that's about it, right? Oh, I remember now. One last thing before I sign off. Um, the hands are actually curved. Do you see that? It's an old vintage detail. You don't see it very often. But, you know, because they were so adamant about trying to get this watch thin um, and kind of sleek looking, they used these very long hands. But as a result, the hands wouldn't necessarily fit under the crystal. Um, so they had to actually tilt the, the ends of the hands in order to make that work. And this is like a very old school vintage watch. Uh, like you see it on vintage watches. You rarely see it on modern watches, but I really appreciated that touch as well. Okie dokie. So there you have it. Um, the SBGK005, the SBGZ001. Um, if you're interested in knowing more, check out my article, check out SGX's article on movement finishing. And also uh, 
there's a great model called the SPGY003. So Sakai-san designed this whole um, this whole range, this whole thin dress series. Uh, sorry, this whole series. Sakai-san designed like the fundamentals of the thin dress series, but his personal baby is actually the SPGY003. They're a little hard to come by now because they were limited edition, but if you get a chance, like check them out because they're really, really fantastic pieces. Alrighty, hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.